All right, everybody. Hello. This is our first lecture in uh, chapter 21 of the statistics modeling our world curriculum. Um, in this chapter, we kind of do a variety of things in this chapter. Uh, we end up talking a little bit more about p-values. We define what an alpha value is. Uh, we talk about using confidence intervals to do a hypothesis test. Um, we also talk about type 1 and type 2 errors, and we do a, uh, a little bit about the power of a test. Now, uh, that's a lot, right? It's kind of a big smorgasbord of things that we are going to talk about. We kind of take it in part. So let's begin uh, just talking a little bit more about p-values. So what do we do with a high p-value? What, what does that tell us about the situation? Uh, when we see a small p-value, um, remember, the p-value is, is a probability. So a small p-value, we could just believe that the sample that we saw was just a rare event, right? We can cl conclude that we just witnessed a rare event. Um, however, because we're going to trust the data, uh, and we're going to use that as evidence to reject the null hypothesis. However, a big p-value doesn't mean that... All it means is that what we observed isn't surprising. It falls in line with what we what we thought. Uh, if we believe the proportion of orange M&Ms is 0.2, and we get a high p-value from a sample that we test, that just falls in line with what we think. That the previous known knowledge is is still there. Okay. Um, so the, the results are in line with the assumption that we made about the null hypothesis. Uh, so we don't have a reason to reject it. Now the thing that's really important, and, and it's a subtle difference when we're when we're discussing results, is that a big p-value doesn't prove the null hypothesis. It's true. It's true. All it does is it offers no evidence that that it is not true. Because again, think about this: if this was our model, and uh, this is what we witnessed right here. Uh, and then, so the sample that we witnessed um, is right here, right? It's something that close, the p-value is not going to be rejected. Well, what if the actual model has the mean down here, and what we witnessed was actually a rare event from a different mean? So notice that it doesn't actually prove it to be correct. It just is possibly... Uh, it, it doesn't provide evidence that it's not true, okay? But there is the, the occasion that what we saw is a rare event of a different sample, or excuse me, population proportion. So we have to be careful when we say that it proves it correct, because it doesn't prove it correct. This is why when we have a large p-value, the most we can say is that we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. We're not accepting it. We're not saying that, that it's true. We're simply saying that we don't have enough evidence to reject it. And that is a subtle difference in words, but when we're talking about important research, it really does mean something to say that. Okay. Um, so let's move on. Again, remember, today's, today's random day. Uh, let's talk about this thing called an alpha, uh, an alpha level. So we've been kind of wishy-washy in the last chapter about when we reject the null hypothesis. I gave a general, if it's smaller than 0 0.05, we reject. However, the decision we make about whether or not to reject the null hypothesis is not necessarily based on just this 0 0.05. Uh, in fact, the decision that we make on it is actually arbitrary. It can be chosen. When, what we think is too small. So there are times, however, we need to make a firm decision. And so uh, what does it mean for a p-value to be too rare, right? A small p-value tells us that our data is rare, given the null hypothesis, but how rare is rare, right? How rare of an event do we need it to be in order to reject the null hypothesis. Well, we get to define what a rare event is. Okay, We get to say what is statistically significant. 
um, we choose what that threshold is. And when the p-value falls below that, we reject the null hypothesis. And way back when in uh, our topic on, uh, what's that, what was it, on uh, uh, experiments, and when we were doing experimental design, we introdu introduced this term, statistically significant. And we said that that term significant, statistically significant meant it couldn't have happened by random chance. Well, we're going to augment that a little bit. Uh, and we're going to say that statistically significant results mean that we've rejected the null hypothesis. That it, uh, it falls so far away from the null hypothesis that it's not a random fact that it fell that far away, that it's that the null hypothesis is actually, um, being rejected. It's not good enough. Okay. So this threshold we make, uh, it's called the alpha value. We denote it with that little symbol right there. So we have some common alpha levels. Those common alpha levels are 0 0.10, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. 0 0.05 probably being the most common out of those. However, okay. Um, when we are uh, choosing uh, what we the, the situation, we need to choose carefully the alpha level that we use because Certain situations call for more exact results. If you're talking about a situation where there's very little room for error or there is uh, something very important on the line, it is more appropriate to use a smaller alpha value because we want to fail to reject more often when rejecting the null hypothesis too early would cause lives, right? And again, the example that I used in a previous video was um, when you're testing the tensile strength of rivets for your airplane, okay? You don't want that. You don't want to be wishy-washy about that, right? You don't want to accept a 10% occurrence where some, like 8% of the time it might fail. That's a, that's a terrible thing because when your rivets on the airplane fail, lots of people die. You need something strong. You need strong evidence to make sure that that's going to work. So you use a very low alpha value. However, if you're, if it's not such a huge deal when you're talking about like, uh, I don't know, colors of M&Ms, uh, the proportions, it might be okay to take something that's a 7%, uh, because nobody's going to die if we've made an error. And, uh, that, that does play a, a difference in what we're doing. Okay. So this alpha level, we choose it uh, based on the situation, and that alpha level is uh, is the threshold we use to um, to reject the the null hypothesis, right? We call this the significance level, right? If I want to say a significance level of 0 0.05, that means that my alpha level is 0 0.05, and that means if my p value is below that number, I reject the null hypothesis, right? Um, we sometimes say that if we reject the null hypothesis, we might say that it's significant at that level. It's significant at 0.05. One there we go. Did I skip something? Hold on, I had to check. Okay. Uh, so, what do we say if the p-value does not fall below that alpha value? Well, that means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis, right? The data have failed to provide sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Again, be careful. We never say that we're accepting the null hypothesis. This is a bad thing, okay? We're not accepting the null hypothesis. We are simply saying there is not enough evidence to reject it. It is gonna be the working hypothesis until we find enough evidence to reject it. Uh, and if you recall back when we were talking about it in terms of a jury, when we do not find the defendant guilty, we say the defendant is not guilty. We don't say that they're into innocent. Okay, this is purposeful use of words. Uh, we're, we're not saying that just because guilty and not guilty use the same thing, right? We say not guilty because we're not saying they're innocent. We're saying there isn't enough evidence to convict them. They still might have done it, but there isn't enough evidence to convict them. Therefore, they are not guilty.
So the p-value gives the reader far more information than just stating the that you reject or fail to reject the null. This uh, changing alpha level uh, kind of gives the reader their own oppor opportunity to decide what is strong and not strong evidence. If you set the alpha level at 0 0.10 and you have a 0 0.07 uh, p-value, Somebody else reading your research might say, well, 0.10 is a terrible idea. We should be doing 0.05, and it's not significant at 0.05. So giving that information allows your readers and the people who are, are reading the research uh, the ability to make that decision themselves, right? Because what you consider to be statistically significant might not be the same as what someone else considers to be statistically significant. Um, so that's why there's more than one alpha level uh, that we have to use uh, for each, or excuse me, that's why there's more than one alpha level that can be used, but each test will give only one p-value. So let's do an example uh, using an alpha level, and then we will uh, go ahead and uh, call that a day here. So this is very similar to a problem we've done in the past, uh, but we are going to add this little bit at the end, use an alpha level of 0 0.01. So, a large city's Department of Motor Vehicle claimed that 80% of candidates passed driving tests, but newspaper reported surveys of 90 randomly selected local teens who had taken the test found that only 61 passed. Does this finding suggest that passing rate for teenagers is lower than the DMV reported? Use an alpha level of 0 0.01. And again, while all that this tells us to do is do the hypothesis test, but this time only reject the null hypothesis if it's below 0 0.01. So let's go through our uh, our thing here. Hammock, uh, what is our hypothesis? Uh, They're claiming that it's 80%. So my null hypothesis is P equals 0.8. Um, and then they say here uh, in the question, does this finding suggest that the passing rate for teenagers is lower? So my alternative hypothesis will be that this is less than 0.8. Let's check our assumptions and conditions. Uh, we have uh, randomness and sample size. And randomness, uh, is this random? Do they say this is random? Yep, right there. 90 randomly selected local teams. So question stem states this is random. States the, I should say, the participants were selected random, randomly. And then we have to say, is our sample size big enough? And we've got a sample size of 90. Uh, we're going to multiply that by 0.8. So 90 times 0.8. Is going to give us 72 successes, and that's bigger than 10. Uh, that means that we have 18 failures. That's bigger than 10. So both successes and failures are greater than 10. Therefore, doing a lot of writing here. Therefore, the sample size is large enough. And so we've done our two uh, conditions that need to be met. Uh, so we're going to say here that the conditions have been met. To perform a one, that's a funky looking B, uh, to perform a one prop Z test. So there's our H and our A. I have run out of space, so I'm going to erase that. You should pause the video if you feel like you need to write that down. Okay. Um, let's do our mechanics. So I am using a TI-84 calculator here, and I'm just doing the one prop Z test command. Um, so our null hypothesis is 0.8, our X is 61, our sample size is 90, 
um, and we are doing a uh, greater than test. So let's uh, get all of that info in here. And when we calculate that, um, oops, I did some wrong. This is a less than test. I said a greater than test. I apologize. And I typed the wrong thing on my calculator. Now I'm still talking about it. Okay, that's better. Uh, so we got a Z score of negative 2.89 and a P value of uh, 0 0.0019. So our conclusion then, using an alpha value of 0 0.01, is 0 0.0019 smaller than 0 0.01? Yes. So we're going to write our conclusion. And uh, again, if you've watched the previous videos, <coughs> we're taking a craps. Uh, the S and the uh, the A and the S here are assume significance, um, and that's where we're going to talk about the alpha value. Right, so remember we need to do context, uh, reject or fail to reject, and state our p-value. Now why I decided to double the c in some of these and the r in the others, I don't know, right? I'm not a consistent person. Uh, so our conclusion, we need to include all of these things in here. So first, I'm going to say based on our p-value of 0 0.0019, I reject the null hypothesis, at an alpha level, alpha level, of 0.01. Okay, so that takes care of reject or fail to reject, state my p-value, and the assumed significance in that one sentence, and then bring in the context here. What does this mean to reject the null hypothesis? Well, it means that there is significant evidence that the proportion of teenagers passing a test is smaller than 0.8. And that's it. So that's the end of uh, this video here today. And uh, we will continue on with some chapter uh, 21 things in a bit, talking about confidence intervals and how they relate to a, um, into a hypothesis test and what some type 1 and type 2 errors and all of that are. Again, if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments. We'll be sure to get to you. Thank you very much for watching. Woo!